Welcome back. All right, so I want to talk about broadcasts today. Uh, what I, I, I like personally, you guys can let me know what you like with broadcasts. What makes you think of a broadcast as being a really good one? Do you go, you know what? I really, I like this. This is great. Now, we're a quarter of the way into the season, so I think it's a good time to have this discussion. I usually, about once a year, will rank some of my favorites. Um, I try not to get into my least favorites that much because people can get upset. The less I mean, people, people just generally can. And I know it's the internet, so that's what you can expect. But at any rate, I wanted to talk about what I, what I like with broadcasts. And I've got some notables on the board here, but they're not the only ones. Obviously, there's others that are really good. Just certain ones I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> so you guys can let me know in the comment section below what you like in the broadcasts, which which aspects you like and maybe which ones you don't, right? Um, and this could be the broadcast you're exposed to all the time, or it could be, you know, I was on, I was watching the, the feed out of, out of Denver. I was watching the feed out of Dallas, wherever, and, and give your opinion on that. So I think, you know, at the top of the board, I think what's most important is the good rapport between commentators and really strong rapport between play between whoever's doing the play-by-play -play and the color announcing is really really important now I don't have the Oilers up there I restricted myself to three teams for most of this but pretty good rapport between Michaels and DeBrusque absolutely um, but that being said Detroit stands out you have Ken Daniels you have Mickey Redmond Mickey's a treasure absolutely fantastic uh, Carolina I think Carolina's announcing is really good I think Trip Tracy does a good job um, I understand that like the announcing has changed over the years, but I think it's still really high quality. I, I do. I think that the just the rapport is good. And Arizona, honestly, Tyson Nash, I think has come a long way as an announcer. Tyson Nash years ago, I, I found to be kind of annoying a little bit here and there at times and kind of drive me crazy. But now, no, I, I really actually really enjoy the announcing on the Arizona broadcasts. Um, the important thing is that, that the rapport has to sound easy and, and usually it'll lead to, you know, some jokes here and there, maybe a little bit of a story here and there, which is okay during the play by play. So Mickey Redmond can tell an odd story here and there. I'm fine with that. To me, it does not distract me from the play at all. Um, that's a little bit different, you know, especially when it's, well, back in my day and, and especially if his voice trails off cause he knows there's some stuff he can't tell us. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, or if he accidentally swears and then realizes he did it. Never been fined or fired that I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, that's that's important, and I, I wanted to highlight those three broadcasts. But there are definitely others. You guys can let me know your thoughts. Solid play-by-play. Play-by-play announcing. For me, the Rangers are the gold standard. The Rangers play-by-play. -play. You watch a Rangers feed, you're like, yeah, yeah, it's hockey. That's as hockey as it gets. You're at MSG. The announcing's on point. Play-by-play uh, -play is an excellent. I think Vancouver, I think John Shorthouse does a very good job. And honorable mention to uh, Tampa Bay, Dave Randorf as well. But Vancouver, I think, I think Shorthouse has started to really get the respect that he deserves. He's a very good play-by-play uh, -play announcer. And then with the Ottawa games, you get Gord Miller. And I think Gord Miller is one of the best play-by-play -play, uh, announcers in the game, maybe of all time. He's up there now. Uh, been around for a long time and we'll we'll come back to TSN and I'll talk about each individual uh, organization that broadcasts out the hockey uh, as we as we get to the end of this video but yeah those are the three I wanted to highlight again you guys can let me know your thoughts uh, the gambling talk has to be on like minimal uh, there are certain broadcasts right now and I'm not getting into which ones but there are certain broadcasts where you're like okay all right, how many lines are we going to talk about here? How many how many different gambling uh, uh, items are we going to get squashed into this broadcast? How many times are we going to see something show up on the screen telling us, here's what the line's at right now, here's what the over-under is. Like, I, I watch hockey to watch hockey. I don't care about any of the gambling stuff. So, and I've mentioned this before, when I watch AHL broadcasts, when I was watching AHL broadcasts during the Calder Cup, it was startling that there was no gambling talk. None. It was so refreshing and so nice that all the talk was about the hockey being played. Because when all the gambling talk's going on, you're you're taking out something from your announcing. You're taking out all of those little side stories. You're taking out the reporting from the benches. You're taking out something to make room for that. So that's part of what annoys me with all the gambling stuff is I have absolutely zero interest um, and again, in Canada, it's just legal in Ontario. So all of Canada gets to watch all those ads and it's really aggravating. 
So yeah, um, it it is it is something that, and I just put depends on the night because some broadcasts are obnoxious one night and the next night they're not. So it really depends on which broadcast you're watching on which night. You guys can let me know your thoughts on that though. Great color commentators are really important, and and there are four on the board, five altogether. Although the fifth one. He has a team, but not really. So we'll start with Darren Pang, who who absolutely hurt St. Louis fans by going to Chicago. Um, would would that be like going from Montreal to Toronto, going from Toronto to Boston? Um, go like when Sofia Yerskovich went from Toronto to Boston. I thought that's a gutsy call. Uh, but yeah, Darren Pang going to Chicago. It just feels weird. And I know Panger played for Chicago, but it's still it's weird to hear him on the Chicago broadcast. But it's nice too. I, I think that he he elevates their broadcasts. So uh, when you've got a younger play-by-play announcer, I think having a really experienced hand in Darren Pang on the announcing t- announce team really helps. So I think he's great. And B- Buffalo, I know there are people who don't like Rob Ray. I understand there are people who do not like Rob Ray. I think when Rob Ray makes the self-deprecating jokes, they're always well-timed and they're usually really funny. And even if they're not they're at least they're at least notable so i i really like rob ray <clears throat> and i know i may be one of the few because i've all i've i've seen a lot of complaining about rob ray over the years i i don't i don't i don't hear it myself i think rob ray's uh entertaining to listen to um andy brickley in boston i think people hate jack edwards and i get it i i do i totally get it but andy brickley i think is a treasure I think between the Boston accent, I think just the way he the way he talks and everything else, and and he's insightful as well. So Boston broadcasts, I I agree. Jack Edwards can be tough to sit through at times, but I have I have nothing but respect for Andy Brickley, uh, a part of the Boston landscape for a very long time as an announcer. And yeah, I wanted to highlight him here because I know the Boston uh, broadcast on Nesson gets buried a lot, and I get it. Like I said, but. I, I don't put that on Brickley. And Ken Danico in New Jersey. So I was trying to do just three, and I was like, I can't. We're going to talk about color broadcasters. I can't. I have to talk about Ken Danico. Love Danico on the New Jersey broadcast. I think he does a fantastic job. Um, honestly, what's interesting is MSG. Let's let's just give props to MSG, MSG Plus, and everything they've got going on. Because I've got the Rangers, Buffalo, New Jersey, and the New York Islanders all on the board. They all have very good broadcasts. Uh, if I had one quibble, it's that the the shot totals aren't always shown on screen. I really like to see the shot totals on screen when I'm browsing around between games because it tells me, oh, this team's had a flurry of shots since the last time I was on this on this broadcast. But yeah, Danico's great. I think he does a very good job. Um, he he he's another player who is a broadcaster now who tells very good stories as well, especially when they have the throwback nights to the Stanley Cup winners of '95, 2000, or 2003. He is he is the guy to talk to because he kind of knew those players. So he's entertaining and and I like him. And then Ray Ferraro, I have to talk about Ray Ferraro, but he's on Vancouver broadcasts. He's on U.S. broadcasts. He's on Canadian national broadcasts. He's kind of all over. Uh, Ray Ferraro, and I understand too that he he may be a, a bit overexposed for some. I do think that doing color announcing for the EA games for as long as he did. I think that might have made people like, I'm tired of listening to him. I heard him on my game all day. But I, I think Furrow does a really good job. And again, there's some self-deprecating humor in there. There's some insight that he gives you. A color announcer should give you insight on what you're seeing on the ice. Should give you sort of an insider's view on the game and not feel like he's talking over the game or he is... Um, I mean, self-importance not the right term, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Like they should, they should be adding to it rather than sort of going, "Hey, but I got to tell you about this time." Man, I tell you about that story. Yeah, you did, Bill. Yeah, no, we heard that last game. You're fired, Bill. That kind of, you know, that kind of thing. So I think Ray Ferraro does a good job. Uh, now, neutral. Now, I have to put somewhat neutral because obviously these are regional broadcasts. I've talked about this before, and I want to talk about it here where there are some broadcasts that clearly are very, very, very much um, of the mind that the team that they're broadcasting for should win 82 games and 16 playoff games and be done. And no matter what the penalty is, if it's on their team, it's, well, I mean, you know, Bob, I mean, that hit. Yeah, he, he pummeled him head first into the boards, and I understand he's bleeding everywhere, and he, he did take 15 steps and jumped into the hit, 
But do we really want to call that a charge in this day and age? Back in my day, yeah, no, I, you know, it, 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 and and then any time that anything happens to a player on a team that they're openly rooting for, they're like, did you see that slash on the hands? Did you see that? And then they show the replay, and it's nowhere near as bad as they're making it sound. Like, yeah, pff, that's a missed call. And just, it, it, that can be aggravating. So I do think it stands out when you have that somewhat neutral experience. And for me, three that stand out of the teams, and I can only use a team once. That was my rule here, too. Uh, Dallas, I think, does a good job of staying somewhat somewhat neutral. Because, again, it's a regional broadcast. You don't expect complete and total neutrality. I think the Islanders do a good job of that, too. Uh, Butch Goring can get a little bit a little bit homerish at times, but again, I think the overall broadcast is good, and he's fair most of the time as well. And Seattle, I think, has done a good job uh, between J.T. Brown, uh, John Forsling. I think they have a good broadcast team. I think they do a good job too of making sure they straddle the line between talking to people who know hockey and people who might be new to hockey. I think Seattle's done a really good job. Uh, strong broadcasting, and it it definitely is somewhat neutral. Again, I'm not talking complete neutrality, where if you're watching, you couldn't tell who they were uh, broadcasting for, but it shouldn't be as obvious. And then there are some that are very enthusiastic about their team. So this might be seen as the other way, but again, it might make for a really good broadcast for you. You want to hear your announcers excited when your team scores. And I think there's four that, to me, that are not on the board are, are the ones that stand out the most. Colorado, I have always thought it was relatively entertaining watching Altitude. And I, I feel bad for Colorado fans because you guys able to watch Altitude yet? Is it still not able to? Anyways, uh, but when, when Colorado scores, big celebration, they get all happy. When the other team scores, you, you won't even hear a change in the cadence. So um, it can be, well, uh, Johansson with the puck, up, oh, turns it over, Kyle Connor the other way. Connor in and he scores. Um so one nothing Jets on that one bomb from Kyle Connor, and then if Nachushkin gets a goal, it's you know it it's really exciting. Pittsburgh too, Pittsburgh. It uh, there are times where I'll watch a Pittsburgh broadcast and be like, oh, the other was there a goal that they now that if I wasn't watching right now, I wouldn't have known that was a goal. But again, when Pittsburgh scores, it's exciting. Nashville, Nashville broadcasts are very enthusiastic about the Preds. And Florida broadcasts, always enthusiastic about their team. Uh, and and I, I think that, again, it really depends on your tastes. At times, I think it can be heavy-handed, but I get it. I totally get why people would love that kind of broadcast. Uh, if you only watch your team, then you're going to enjoy that, right? Um, now, looking at each broadcast, Sportsnet, I think, still does a very good job. I do think TSN is a little bit better than Sportsnet. I think TSN, I think the quality of the announcers is a little, and again, it's just, it's such a small margin. But to me, TSN does such an amazing job with their hockey presentation. And it reminds you that when they had the national broadcasting rates, they, they did do a pretty good job. Just they got outbid by Rogers, who owns Sportsnet. Um, but I, I do think the Canadian broadcasts in general are pretty well done. I know there's Toronto fans that aren't, aren't happy with the Toronto broadcast, but um, I, I've never had really a, a problem with it. But again, I understand if you're a Toronto fan and, and you think that there's bias against your team from announcers, which I, I didn't put on the board because I really don't hear it, but I know there's fans who hear it, that their, their announcers are kind of biased against their team. And I don't think that's what it is. I think it's similar to when I, when I talk about all 32 teams and I feel like I can be critical of Boston, Dallas, and Vancouver because people know those are teams that I root for. I can be a little more critical of them than I am of other teams without people saying, oh, I can't believe he, he hates on us so badly. So I think there's some of that with announcers too, that they'll be more critical of the team they're covering for similar reasons. Just being, you know, I, I see this team all the time. I'm in a better position to criticize this team for their play right now. The other team they're playing against, I don't see as much. So I, I can't really say much about their play in general just what they're doing tonight so i get it uh espn espn does does well i still the the double headers on espn and tnt drive me nuts that they're two and a half hours apart because almost never are you gonna have a game start at four o'clock and be done and ready to switch over to a game at 6 30 so on on hockey night in canada they have the four o'clock broadcast and the seven o'clock broadcast uh the puck drop will be delayed about seven minutes for the early one usually right on time for the late game 
but it, it doesn't really make much of a difference to the puck drop, if at all, having the early games, the late games. In fact, I can't remember a, a Canadian broadcast having a delayed puck drop. But the American puck drops get delayed regularly, where I'll say, okay, so this game starts at 4, it's being broadcast on TNT. This one's at 6.30 on TNT, so it's not starting until about 7. Got it. So I've, I've figured that out now, that if it's a doubleheader, it's not starting when they say it's starting. Uh, I do sometimes get frustrated that they spend a lot of time with post-game stuff and interviews and stuff, rather than just dropping the puck on the doubleheader. Um, I don't know how many people watch all the post-game interview stuff. I understand that during the playoffs, but when it's just a random game in November, I don't know how many people are sticking around to watch it. Um, but again, you guys can let me know your thoughts. And I, I don't see a big difference either between ESPN and TNT. I've seen people saying ESPN does a really good job. TNT's broadcasts aren't very good. I don't see a huge difference. If I didn't, sometimes if I didn't have the ESPN or TNT logo on the screen, or if I didn't hear the music, the music tells you what it's ESPN. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really know much of a difference between the two. Um, I, I think that they do a good job. I do think some of the studio stuff goes on a little bit long. Uh, there are times where I felt like the the intermissions are longer for ESPN and TNT games than they are for others. I know they're not, but sometimes it feels like they can be. Uh, but yeah, so that's my opinion on those. And then Bally. I think Bally, uh, despite all their financial issues, I think they broadcast a pretty good, pretty solid product overall. Uh, Bally has all three up here. So these are all three Bally pro pro uh, 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 broadcasts. Uh, this is Bally here, Bally, as well as this one. And of course, Root Sports, Pittsburgh's broadcasting their own this year, right? Because Sportsnet's gone. Uh, Vegas isn't on the board either. I know that Vegas is broadcasting their own. Arizona is actually broadcasting their own now too, right? Because Bally dropped them or they left Bally. So, but it's the same broadcast team. That's why it's easy for me to think, well, it's still on Bally. Uh, but you just don't get the aggravating music. So that's a benefit. Um, I don't have N or, uh, NBC Sports on here. Uh, there's there's like a couple of NBC Sports still, I do believe. Chicago and San Jose, I want to say, are the two now because Washington's Monument Sports. But again, when they've switched around, they've basically kept the same announced team. So I think that's a good call. But you guys can let me know your thoughts. I, I think that there's um, a lot of ways to evaluate uh, what makes for a good broadcast, and you guys can let me know. I thought about putting up, like, graphics, but, eh. I thought about talking about the digital boards, but they're on all 32 broadcasts. We don't like them, and that's that. We've talked about it before. We as fans, generally, the, the feeling is we don't like the digital boards, but they're not going anywhere, and the NHL told us, yeah, people like it. Yes, you do. You like it. Because we told you so. I didn't think I did like it, but the NHL told me I did, so that's important. All right, but let me know your thoughts. Which broadcast do you enjoy watching the most? Uh, which one do you kind of roll your eyes at when it's on? Uh, and again, for me, sometimes I don't have a choice. Sportsnet does not give you a choice of which feed you watch, uh, which is too bad because when the NHL was doing the NHL Live thing, you could choose. And I'd be like, well, I don't want to watch that broadcast. I'm going to watch this one. Now I don't have that option. Uh, and then on TV as well with NHL Center Ice. So usually I'll have the choice, but on a really busy day like last night, you just have one broadcast to choose and that's it. And so sometimes I go, ah, oh, I wanted the other broadcast, especially if it's a team against Detroit. I want to hear Mickey Redmond and Ken Daniels. Now, Mickey doesn't work every game either. I know there's people who are going to point that out, uh, that he doesn't work every game. But Detroit still has good rapport between everybody. And they have they have good... So, I, I will say this in closing. One exception to the whole gambling thing that I like is that the Detroit announcers at the start of the game, they'll pick, like, I'm taking the team, I'm taking the goalies, I'm taking this. I think this guy's going to score a goal. And they keep score internally to see which one's predicting the best... I think that's fine. I, I honestly, I would encourage that. I think that's great. And I, I think that's that's a fun way to, you know, uh, wager without actually wagering anything. And and I'm far more entertained to figure out who's going to make the money on the Detroit broadcast than I ever am about the probability of winning a face-off. Holy crow, I don't need to know on every single face-off what the odds are. It's like, oh... Horvat's in the face-off circle against Quinn Hughes, and there's a good chance that Horvat's going to win the face-off. 
this is great insight that this gambling is providing for me. Thank you so much. I just, I don't get it. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you have not done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.